Winter in Sweden. A soft white blanket of snow covers the land. Here are some girls in white clothing carrying lights and singing. What are they doing? Are they sleepwalking? No, this is the start of a Lucia talk, Sweden's Lucia procession. They've dressed up like this and are about to offer a morning treat with saffron buns, gingerbread and maybe coffee. The Lucia procession in its present form has existed for just about a hundred years. First in line walks Lucia, followed by her maids. But Lucia? Who is that? Lucia lived in Syracuse in Sicily. She was killed in the 4th century by Roman soldiers and is remembered as a martyr by the Christian church. It's said that Lucia would bring food to prisoners in a dark dungeon. Because she carried the food in her hands, she wore candles on her head to see in the dark. Perhaps this explains why our Lucia today has light in her hair. These days, Lucia is honoured as the patron saint of those with seeing disabilities. Her holy day is December the 13th, the same as our Lucia Day. She wears a red band round her waist as a symbol of her martyrdom. Here are some more who want to join the procession. Boys with cones on their heads. Juan Gossa, star boys. Dressing up as star boys belongs to a completely different tradition and has nothing to do with Lucia from Syracuse. We borrowed this tradition from Germany as long ago as the 17th century. Young men, students, would stage performances about the birth of Jesus to make a little extra money. These performances featured several biblical figures, Jesus' father, Joseph, his mother, Mary, Judas, who gathered the money they were given, and the three wise men. It was these who later became our star boys. But this usually should happen during Twelfth Night, which is after Christmas, right? In our Swedish Lucia procession, the star boys wear star-spangled cone-shaped hats. This represents the hats worn by the three wise men. But why did a Christian martyr and begging students end up in something called a Lucia procession? Well, as with most traditions, this has developed and changed. And there was in Sweden, already in the Middle Ages, some kind of winter celebration at this time of year. Firstly, a different calendar was used in those days, and Lucia night fell on the longest night of the year. Midwinter night. And secondly, the beginning of the Christmas fast was celebrated in mid-December. Put together Lucia from Syracuse and the Star Boys from Germany with the existing winter tradition in Sweden, then we start to see the Swedish Lucia procession that we recognize today. Nowadays, it's even common to throw in various additional characters in the Lucia procession, like gnomes and gingerbread men. <coughs> or gingerbread women. The Lucia celebration continues to change shape. In some schools there is a whole gang of Lucias, or even a male Lucia. The Lucia procession arrives at Seamus's house. Oh! Good Yule! That wasn't very clever, Seamus. They were about to sing to you and give you... And I'm disguised as a Yule goat. The Yule uh, goat doesn't go with Lucia. You did say that the tradition is changing, so a Yule goat could fit in. Yes, true, right, okay, but... Then I'll run and join in. Oh. Today, Lucia is not a specially religious festival even though there are traces of its religious origins. The celebration is changing and developing just like other traditions. But on more formal occasions, a Lucia procession has one Lucia, her maids and star boys. And a Yule goat. <laughs>